This is cash and this trash. So today we're going to be talking about the hottest subject on the market today, and it's not real estate. And the reason that the hottest subjects on the earth right now is because our money is fake. The lesson is poor people are poor because they don't know fake money. They don't know the difference between real money and fake money. Jim, how long have you been in this business of gold? 50 years. 50, 50 years. years here, yeah. Our time is coming on this one, isn't it? Well, I thought it was coming in 1973 when Me I got too. into business. And it was just a year and a half or so after Nixon had removed uh, the gold. And yeah, this we got it went off the gold standard. He's, it was no longer backed by anything. It was a Federal Reserve note, which is no more federal than Federal Express. <laughs> and we were required to take that as money, whether we liked it or not. I've always stayed ahead of the curve that you can anticipate needs after 50 years in the business. Well, not and everybody can because I was panicking. I was going, you know, because explain the difference. Okay, well, step back. You have the spot price. So let's say today the spot's 20 bucks. There's a premium on top of this coin or this coin, should I say. What does the spot and the premium mean? On, on that particular coin, it's typically between 4 and $5 an ounce over the so spot, spot price. So spot is the price all across the world. Right. And then all of the products and uh, coins and bars and so forth, they will be priced accordingly to based demand. on the availability, the demand, the cost of refining and putting them in the coins and shipping and uh, distributor markup, dealer markup, our markup and all that. So there's always a premium that you pay to get the finished product. That's like the tip at the end of the dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, people are so desperate to money because this is fake. It's terrible. Well, and because they can print it so much that the value is dropping every day. They print up uh, uh, billions every day. Uh, look at the bills that they signed uh, off a trillion point seven. Where's that money coming from? Well, they, they've got to print it. Or they've got to create something through uh, a keystroke entry. That means all the rest of those Federal Reserve notes out there become worth just that much less every day. Yeah, this, this is trash. Cash is really illustrates that the government, the deep state, has won this war. Without legislation, without public debate, they have won the war against cash. You know, they've been at war at cash because it's anonymous, that they, they don't track you, they can't follow you when you use cash, and they've won the war. Yeah. And so... The only alternative people have to be to be off the grid, not to be tracked, not to be surveilled, gold and silver. That's it. That's all. And I've talked to people all the time that have that are multimillionaires. They sold their business. They did this, that, and the other, and it came into all this cash that's sitting in the bank. And he said, "Well, you think I should buy some gold with some of this?" <laughs> I said, "Well, you know what they're doing—the dollar. You know that they keep print printing them. They can't print gold now." You tell me how much you can afford to lose of all that money sitting in the bank. And I would say, leave that there and get the rest of it in gold. It's a bigger risk having paper money. It's a guarantee. It's a guaranteed loss. And, and eventually these are going to be worthless. And we're in the 51st year of fiat money. When Nixon closed the gold window, a currency has never lasted more than 50 years until now. And we're in year 51. So are we any different? Look what they they've done in Venezuela. Become they were one of the richest countries in the uh, in South America and, and actually the Western Hemisphere. Look what they've done to Argentina. Look what they've done in Cuba. Look what they've done in Mexico. The same exact economic principles that they broke there. We're yeah, doing the same thing here. Some, somebody asked me once, how many, Charles, how many paper currencies have gone uh, broke, have gone <laughs> worthless over time? And the answer is all, all of them. All of them. And the, and the ones that the ones that people still hold are only on their way. They just haven't arrived at their final destination yet. Something's wrong here. And that's <laughs> Gresham's law. And I, I think that's one of the reasons I'm a rich person is I know real from fake. <laughs> and then, so when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard in 71, it was a felony. They they could put you in prison for 10 years and charge you $10,000 fine. They made it a felony for Americans, free people, to own monetary gold and silver. Yeah. Or gold, anyway. It was a, it was a felony. How they, was it dangerous? Was it going to blow up? Was it nuclear contamination? Was it kill your neighbors with poison? What, what was wrong? Well, was, of course, you know the answer. It's always the same answer. The government grabs all the gold because it wants it for itself, so you can't be allowed to have any. It's exactly well, it, what they did. At that time, there were two uh, very good senators, uh, Steve Sims and Jesse Helms, who introduced the idea of Americans owning gold because 
foreigners could own gold and Americans couldn't. And if there's anything to be said good about Gerald Ford, it was that he signed the bill after it passed through both houses to make gold legal to own. Now, unfortunately, at the time, gold was around $200 an ounce. And over the next year and a half or so, it dropped to 100 So a lot of the curiosity of owning gold disappeared. But fast forward to the Jimmy Carter days, 1976, gold went to 100 And by the end of Carter's term, it was 850 And yep. silver went from about $3 an ounce to $50 an ounce in that four-year period. So during, so look, and today, this is the biggest reason you want to own gold. Because our pensions, you know, as we keep raising interest rates, our 401ks are going down. But not only this, is my my book wrote with Ed, Ed Sedell. It's our pensions are broke. So it's the firefighters, police officers, school teachers. Their pensions are gone. So the Fed's going to have to print. That's my that's my whole summation. Well, and what's what's crazy about it too is that you get your statement online every month, and it says, "Oh my God, look, I have five hundred thousand dollars in my pension plan." Boy, that's going to last me till um, the year uh, twenty fifty. It's not going to. The dollar's not going to be there, first of all. And the pensions are gone, too. But gold will be there this forever. Be here. This is God's money. I mean, they, they, we used to have money for about 5,000 years. When you read the stories about all the Spanish ships that have sunk over yeah. the years coming across the Atlantic, and the explorers go down there, they're not going down there looking for the currency of the realm of the day and see if the paper survived. They're going down there looking for the gold. They're going yeah. there looking for the silver. And they find it. And what's amazing is that if this bar had been in the bottom of the ocean for 500 years, it'll still be in this pristine condition. It doesn't rust. It doesn't erode. It will do the same thing now, 500 years later. And uh, they they brought some amazing coins that have been in the Spanish ships that were in pristine condition that have graded out, uncirculated, like was the day that it came out of the mint. And uh, this is the hottest subject going. For years, I've been saying buy silver because everybody can afford silver. The um, U.S. Treasury and various governments around the world, Canada, South Africa, make a coin of the realm, meaning an American eagle for uh, the United States. So the Treasury makes that coin. The premium is significantly higher for that than it is for this. But it's exactly the same properties, same weight, same size and everything. So you get more silver for fewer dollars if you buy it in the buffaloes or what we call generic, but recognized as being a coin of the realm and something that you can be sure that it's the purity that it's supposed to be. So uh, reputable private refineries make the buffalo. The U.S. Treasury makes the American Silver Eagle. It's cumbersome and banks typically don't want to take cash and ironically, they don't want to give cash out either. So. We've had situations people wanted to go withdraw $100,000 in cash at the bank. They'll say, come back in three or four days and we'll accumulate it for you, but we don't have it here. I say, don't even do that. Just wire the money over to us. It just boom, boom, boom. Simple. We don't have to worry about any counterfeit cash, although our machines pick it up anyway. But yeah. it's it's a cumbersome thing to do. But I look at at the big picture, some point down the road, this cash is going to be worthless. And if the banks don't want to take it in deposits, I don't want to be stuck with two or three million dollars in cash mm-hmm. and then and lose that. I would rather have money in the bank, not money, but I mean fake money in the bank that I can buy real silver and gold with and have that on the shelf rather than cash sitting there that is devaluing every day. 